Yo, what's good? Welcome to another episode of Fun With Dumb. Uh, yeah, man, this last few weeks have been crazy. Um, I learned how to film and record all these podcasts by myself, running three cameras, audio equipment, you know, and I'm a very non-tech savvy dude, so that was a process, but we're back up and running strong. One man band, let's get it. Uh, today is a guest uh, which I like to call an, a young in our community, somebody elderly or older. <laughs> <laughs> that made you sound really no, bad. No, elderly Wait, hold on, put that down a little bit because it's covering your face. Like, put uh, it like, like kind of down like that, and then it'll come up to you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a, a man who's. Uh, we had a TV show together actually on a cable network where we were co hosts and uh, we would interview K pop artists and Korean entertainers. Um, but for America and an English speaking audience. So we interviewed all these like K-pop groups over the years. And he was like the, he was, he's like a staple in the K-pop community yes, and OG. One of the, one of the elders. One, one of the OGs of the K-pop community. And pe you know, when people associate K-pop, they think about all these like young boys, like multiple six, seven dudes, but you know, there's a history to this culture. And this man was one of the guys who have paved the way into K-pop history books and this is uh danny m from one time make some noise what's up man <laughs> i don't know why it's make some noise. Noise. <laughs> yeah i don't know why i said make some noise but um right. we have uh thanks danny for coming on the show bro yeah man thanks for uh inviting me on yeah so last minute yeah <laughs> so uh it was literally last night yeah last night sadly yeah I don't know if you knew I had nothing to do when I am actually here, man, sadly. But, uh, yeah, let me let me go into intro a little bit more. One time um, uh, was a K-pop group signed to YG Entertainment in the 90s into early 2000s. Was that late 90s to early 2000s? It was uh, late 90s to mid 2000s, yeah. Till mid 2000s. Um, and uh, they were a part of this long generation um, leading up to pretty much Blackpink at this point to, right? You know? Yeah. Well, wow, did you Google me last night or something? Because <laughs> like, even when we were working together, yeah. we didn't know this much. That, that you're, was, not, you're not even reading a script or anything. One What's thing up, I will man? say is I was very ashamed <laughs> that I did not know much about, <laughs> well, I didn't know much about K-pop in general. Who the but, person next to you was all those years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is this dude? And then the funny thing is all the makeup artists, the, the assistants directors interns they know everything about k-pop yeah. and then you know well they knew even more than me so i mean yeah i mean but you know i i even mentioned your name to my group chat of like korean dudes we're all like hip-hop heads but they grew up on korean hip-hop and music um back then and you know i put it like yeah i'm interviewing danny like things i should ask and they had all this stuff i'm like damn bro really? like yeah, yeah like you know jason right yeah, my yeah, boy Jason. Course, he just course, got yeah. married, and he's like, "Yeah, oh, we're congrats, Jason, man." Yeah, he's man. like, he's like, my wife Michelle, you know, uh, <laughs> had posters of Danny all over her room. Oh, damn! I was like, "How's that make you feel?" <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, yo, I always remember Jason, man. He uh, he gave me a dope. Uh, no, it was you. Was it him or you? I remember you guys. One of you guys gave me a dope jacket. I still have it. I think it was Jason. Closet. Yeah, it probably was Jason. That uh, the Olymp '88 Olympics, Seoul Olympics, and it said Danny on it. Oh, you know what? I gave that. Oh, oh. either me or Jason. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he took the pick. I remember when yeah, I yeah. when I put it on. Yeah, he took the pick. Yeah, yeah sure. if I gave it away, I definitely must have been higher or something. Because <laughs> I should plus, not. And plus, it said Danny on it. Okay, I mean, like, that makes sense. I was like, I had to give it. To <laughs> no you. choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Oh wait, maybe you know what? I was actually been looking for that jacket, and I wondered. <laughs> I think that's probably no, what man, happened. Man. I gave it to you or something. Yeah, you know, you, know, you guess okay. you were high, man. Okay, but oh, um, it's in my closet. Right, let me let me just uh, talk a little bit about it. and the reason I kind of brought you here too cuz I was just thinking last night about looking at how far K-pop has come and you know I hate to keep saying that cuz we've talked about this so many times but like really it's like it's finally arrived into this kind of international global market right like yeah, before I mean, I mean there was all these steps like you know even looking at Big Bang and 21 at the time when we were hosting, we were like, they're the international kind of K-pop group. But yeah, even yeah. beyond that, it's kind of now Blackpink and like BTS, you know? Yeah, I mean, they're uh, over there, you know, like headlining Coachella, topping the 200, Billboard 200s and stuff. So, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, and I, I want to talk to you because like, you know, I think there's so many new fans now that they, a lot of them don't really even know like how long this stuff has been going on, right? 
Well, uh, yeah, Korea was founded as Joseon Shide a long time ago. So Korea's been around. <laughs> You're going to really take it back I that know, far? Sorry. Okay, okay, nah. Yeah. No, but I mean, you know, you're part of this, like, long history, and uh, I want to talk about that a little bit. So, for instance, like, YG coming from, uh, you know, Soteji to... <laughs> I'm trying to get you really thing. Google this as <laughs> okay. trying to memorize it. YG, the owner of YG Entertainment, coming from a group called Soteji to Jinushan, which is the group after that generation, right? Yeah, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna turn off this AC. I, I just, <laughs> very unprofessional. Yeah, I had to go pay my own meter. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so Soteji, which was like one of the original, would you say, boy groups in Korea? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times when people try to, uh, give an example of their impact in Korea as to here in the States, it would be like Beatles-esque, you know? I mean? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people shit. actually compare the BTS kind of um, uh, sensation right now to the to the Beatles mania. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which is funny too because they're, they go they're BTS, which is yeah. like almost like a like BTS. a shortened Beatles. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. I get it now. Yeah, because the original BTS, what it stands for, that ain't that yeah. happened. So yeah. So so uh, so Soteji, you're saying we're like Beatles of Korea? Yeah, I mean they started the whole, you know, that whole just phenomena of you know like that hysteria right and stuff uh, group wise yeah you know uh like solo wise would be like the elvis presley or like that kind of phenomena would be like cho young peer or something like that right uh but just with everything as people know k-pop they mostly see like the boy bands and the girl bands and stuff like that and they were the ones to really break through like bam this is it and right. i think everyone was trying to uh in a way um get that same magic again just like here in the states when i mean like when we talk about boy bands and stuff like that we're talking about like it was like the jackson five was the right. epitome you know what i mean and everyone was just basically trying to mold something into that you know that way and find that spark again just like right. like joey mcintyre in new kids on the block he right. was picked for new kids on the block because his voice sounded like michael jackson's yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. when he was a kid so what's do you, what's the history with like soteji i mean obviously there wasn't a system in place of like training trainees and all that stuff at yeah, the yeah. time right yeah yeah so was that just like a group of friends that formed do well, you know soteji i mean he had a vision you know yeah i mean I, I say he had a vision and he knew what he wanted to do and so uh at first he was just a bassist he, he was a bassist in a rock band mm. i mean I know you can go this deep with me, so right now I can't really think of uh, right, right, the, right. The, the group that he was in, but that's they're, fine, they're that's a bit, they're yeah, huge. Yeah. They're huge, and um, he was the, like, the bassist, and then he kind of just went out on his own, and he had this like whole, he had the roadmap in mind or something like that, and so um, he he went out looking and for you know people to be in his group, right. and he, he, you know, he found Lee Juno and Yang Yang Sok, and they formed this three-man group, and uh, he wasn't shy about him being the front runner. I mean, the, the group is called Soteji, Soteji and Boys, and, and, and yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so they they first actually debuted on. Um, it's, it's it's famous in Korea. Like it was famous in Korea back in the day. Like these new groups would come out, um, and they're basically new artists. A live performance but, show. Yeah, like yeah. a like a performance show, and they debut on that show. When was this? This was like this was like ninety two or something okay and um you can find that clip that clip i mean it's huge i've seen it i've seen it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you've seen it too and you know the the veterans in the mm -hmm. industry or whatever you know they rate them and oh, okay. uh it, it it became big afterwards because basically they didn't rate them that good they're like ah, whatever right. you guys are okay but little whatever and they, they weren't sure what it was yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. so because it, it was something new too you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? and uh korea up till then especially even because when i went it was pretty conservative it was very conservative back then too even more so and so i think it was just something that they weren't used to and so i remember they got like a c or something like their grade was like a c and then they just blew up very you know, bad grade for koreans very yeah. bad grade they just um so it's kind of like back in the old days it's like uh the elders right people like me now <laughs> right, 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 right. That were judging. Yeah, yeah, that were judging, but they didn't have uh, 
But the kids, I guess the pulse of the youth. So are you saying the yeah. youth loved it once it dropped and people saw it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, once they came out on that show, they blew up. You right. Know, even though they got a C rating, people didn't care. They right. saw it, and you and know, they became the biggest group yeah. and kind of started this the boy band craze of it. Yeah, that that whole phenomena. Right. I mean, there were boy bands before that, but it's just um, just how big it could be. So know? so a couple of years later, uh, YG. Young Yan Suk, right? Yang Yan Suk. Yang Yan Suk. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> don't don't get me killed. <laughs> yo man, yo yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your T-shirt over over there right, says right. Korean teacher over there. I know, no, no, no. That's, I'm a fraud. Right. Uh, no, okay. No, but so he he starts his own label, and he and then one of the first groups that he signs is is a uh, Chinushan. Well, I mean, if we're going like really chronologically, the I first, want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first group he uh, he came out with after Sotaeji either um, was this group called Keep Six. Okay. And so, but that, but that was under the label uh, Bando, Bando Records, which was the same label as Hotaju Either was on. Mm-hmm. So, but he came out as the executive producer, f- and um, basically his name was on it. Oh, this is the group yeah. he's coming out with yeah. first. And um, they didn't really make it. I, I think he tried to at that time because he was new to you know he never you know introduced another group or made another group. Um, but he kind of went with. What Sotaeju either did, and uh, I think that was the mistake. You know, it was a three three person group, yeah. and like uh, two of them were uh, mainly dancers. Yeah, he and was trying to find that same spark. Yeah, right? he was trying to find that same spark. Um, but obviously, it's different when you're trying to manufacture it, and so um, yeah. Well, I feel like yeah. if it seemed like they were trying to kind of. Uh, figure out what the, that formula was going to be yeah, for yeah. K-pop for many years. Yeah, I mean, you know? and then yeah, there's. Uh, he tried it, didn't work, and obviously he learned from it and look at it now. Yeah, right? he learned so. from it, and then he still, so one of the first successful groups that he had was probably Jinu Shan, Yeah, right? it was Jinu Shan. And Jinu Shan was a duo. It was a duo, Jinu and Shan. Yeah, and they were, they were, they were one of the, I would say, OGs of kind of the rap um, yeah, brought kinda, to Korea. Kind of that, um, it's not just the, What's the comparable I mean, there to was, that duo? There was, there was rap. I mean, if we're talking about rap and... And I see that high five of teenagers doll right there. Right, that, it was that's pretty <laughs> right. legit right there. But uh, <laughs> I've never seen that before, man. That's crazy. This is a <laughs> H O T action figure over yeah, here from that 97, I ninety seven man. I found at a like a vintage wow. kind of souvenir shop that's in crazy. Korea. This is from ninety seven. Is that yeah? Yeah, I think they, I think they did. But this there. is rare. This is like one of like probably four dolls in existence in the world. I don't know. It might be the only one that's still in the box, though, man. That's crazy. And then my boy Danny Chung actually copied me and got one too, but, uh, <laughs> but that's that's another story. <laughs> hey, anyway, so I mean, if you hear even like uh, HOT when they first came out with their first song, um, it has a hip hop vibe to it. I mean, there's right. rap in it and stuff like that. But I think with Genu Shun, uh, what especially what I remember what me and Teddy when we first saw Genu Shun perform on a show. Um, one thing that drew us to that was more so. Uh, it's not just the music; it was their style. You know what I mean? They had the more hip hop style. It, did it feel like an authentic uh, reflection of hip hop in America? Um, more than we've ever seen in Korea, right? You know, I mean, I think even so in the you either or? did you know did yeah. lay the path a little bit with you know like come back home and stuff like that. You know, uh, just 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 the movements and you know just the style that they brought out, just the flavor that you got, not just from the music, but from the people and what they were wearing and how they were acting and stuff like that. And that's what we dug, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, if we just talk about rap music and some hip hop esque music, I mean, there was always, it was there, you know? But Gina Shun kind of brought more of that flavor um, than we seen before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it seemed like there was like a lot, I mean, and then there was even more pushed to the limit with you guys right after. Right, like one time. No, actually, I think it digressed with us at first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys were trying. It was. It, it, beca- it was like more pop. Would you say or something? Or well, I mean, mean, I think it, the reason it was hard it was because um, it still wasn't as mainstream. I mean, like right. it, it wasn't hip hop. You're talking about, or yeah, and and when we're talking about like people could talk about underground scenes here and stuff like that. I mean, even if you're in the underground in the states, man, we're talking about like three, four hundred million people. You know what I mean? The underground, even though the percentages are low. I mean, you could still survive. So you guys were coming in as like an underground group. We weren't, but yeah, and that's the reason because we knew if we just like there was an underground it's, scene in Korea, but you can't. Yeah, eat, it's pointless. Man. It's like, pointless. Yeah, the yeah. percentages might be the same here in the states, but we only right. got like fifty million people. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And so what we we're trying to 
do is kind of like have that balance you know what i mean not be too commercial but we can't just go full on it you yeah know, you know what i mean so we wanted that balance so it's almost like an introduction to ease people in you can't just shove it in what was like so a group like, like when you guys uh and there was uh four members yeah if i'm members. not mis mistaken yeah. <laughs> for, you, for didn't my, you didn't google that for my, man. For my yeah. extensive research <laughs> that lasted about seven minutes uh no nah, no nah. uh so you know when you guys started this group, like first of all, how did you come up with the name One Time? Well, uh, that was from uh, Perry. Perry, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. he was one of the the producers, uh, main producers at YG. Yeah. Even before we got there, yeah. Before it was even called YG. By the way, it wasn't called YG from the get go. Oh, well, it wasn't. Nah, it was called MF M Major Flavor. Oh, Major Flavor. Yeah, 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 Major Flavor. People might know might know the clothing brand that came afterwards, but. Um, actually, the clothing brand came first, by the way. But uh, was that a Korean clothing brand? Yeah. So it was supposed to be like a Korean Fubu or something. Yo, like that. if you look back on the like archives, like Sateji even had the hat on yeah. MF when they yeah, were yeah. when they were doing it because uh, Sean kind of like brought that from Guam because Perry actually his crew in Guam was called Major Flavor. Yeah, they yeah. would you know like he's a good dancer too, man. The, the man could do everything. Yeah, you yeah. Know? He like. He gets down, you know. So his crew that you know they made music or they they went out and you know dance crew and stuff like that. Uh, his crew was called Major Flavor, and he made that logo right with his own. You know, he drew it, and then um, and then Sean kind of brought it to Korea and made it a label or like a, a thing. You mm -hmm. know, like he started with like clothing and put on hats and stuff. Yeah, and then uh, decided uh, before we got there, they decided to name the the company Major right. Flavor. But the only reason it didn't go on was because um, once, you know, the label was going to become legitimate yeah. and we we're going to go with MF, it was already taken by a clothing brand called... Uh, uh, Wait, in Korea? Yeah, No, actually, it was in... Uh, in the States? In, in the States. Or in MF, Euro in, Euro in Europe. Uh, what was it? I think it was like Martin Francis Jabot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, so, uh, and we love them pants. I remember those pants were hot. Yeah. And uh, we're like, dang, they took MF. Like, we couldn't, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, get, that, uh, get that mark. So uh, that's when we changed it to YG. Yeah. You know I mean? So the first album that came out with YG was YG's album, his right, solo right, right. album, his only solo album. And then, so we, our first album was the second album to ever come out with the, the label YG. Before that, it was MF. That, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it used to be called MF Family, by the way. If you see like Genu Shun's English album and stuff, yeah. like MF Family. You know, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. YG Family. What, what, what's your your story during that time? Was that I mean, you're from here and you moved out there? Yeah, I. Uh, so we met YG here. So yeah, I, you, you went know, to school with Teddy. Yeah, me and Teddy were just in high school, just chilling, and then we met some people. They made music, and we just you know we liked music, so we just. We wanted to, because we never been about, around those equipment and stuff, you know what I mean? Like in the studio, you know, and they had all the stuff to record and everything like that. There's always been like, kind of, you know, obviously the kind of the influence of the the Korean American influence onto the Korean music scene, right? Like there's a lot of, a lot of cats like you or, you know, Tiger JK and now with like Jay Park and Jesse who are yeah. from the States who go out there with, and then make it like, either influence and also let the music out there influence them yeah. and kind of cause a fusion. I mean, that's, that's why, of course, that's why I think even so. I mean, like that's why American music, I mean, still is the pinnacle of, you know, the music in the world is because it's, it's a hybrid of all these influences, you know what I mean? Like yeah. when we went to school and stuff, like we had people of all ethnicities, you know what I mean? You don't, especially in creativity, you don't want to be crammed into a box. You got to think outside the box. And so you got to travel outside the box. And so I think um, that's what is needed. You right. Know what I mean, in, in this world, because you're making the music for. Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking about how like during that time, even I feel like the the elders in Korea were even more stricter than now. You know, because they like, were, man. Yo, when we came out, I remember, uh, like, uh, especially on like KBS or something, because KBS was like 100% like government run or something, um, that uh, we had to, you know, cover our tattoos. Um, your I mean, hair, you still yeah, got to do that, right? Your hair couldn't be too light and stuff. No, but I mean, these oh, your days it couldn't even be dyed. No, man. Oh, wow. Like, like, so on just like certain shows or this or that. Yeah. Like, if I had sleeveless, the, the makeup artist will have to like cover that up and right. uh, have to spray my hair black or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like girls weren't allowed to show belly button, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, right, right. 
and that's from my era. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And uh, that that was I like, guess it's a long time ago now, but for that me, was still like was, early two yeah. thousands. Yeah, right. that was like ninety. Yeah, late '90s, early 2000s stuff, right. which trips me out when I think about it now. How well, I think I think it was just moving so fast in Korea. Progress was happening. Like, who knows? Like, yeah. in, maybe in two years we could smoke weed there. Who knows? Like, <laughs> no, I doubt it. <laughs> I think that one they're not gonna let slide for a while. But yeah, uh, that one, I think you have to go past generations. Though. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, yeah, that's interesting to kind of see. I mean, what what was. If there was, there was, it still wasn't like a trainee process, was there, or was there? I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm sure at uh, like at other places there could have been, right? Um, but ours was, uh, I think, even with YG, he was just a little bit more raw. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he meant to be, <laughs> or you know, was sometimes, he still... sometimes we could say it was pretty ghetto, but um... yeah. But was he overseeing kind of like the production and the style of music direction you guys were gonna go? Or so w what happened was, yeah, at first he does, you know, he he oversees it. But then one thing I think that we enjoyed a lot, and maybe took too much advantage of too, was um, he let us do our own thing. And I think that's why we were different. Like we weren't when we came out, we were not those clean cut whatever you know groups that came out and i always say that i don't even think we were ready he like threw us out there you know what right. i mean and learn on the fly you know and um so i cringe when i see our first album and stuff out there and stuff but uh but i think that's it was just a little bit more um authentic grime like and that's what i think stood out to people maybe yeah it was um it wasn't i'm not saying it was good you know, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I'm just saying something was, uh, it felt a little bit more authentic, less robotic, I right. guess, you know? And I think that's how it's going now, too, though. I think that's why. And I you, I mean, and once also a very significant member in your group was like a really great producer, Teddy. Um, he's all right, yeah. He's all right, and he's, you know, he's obviously very responsive for a lot of the hits that came out of YG up till right now. Uh, who you know he produces for Blackpink, he yeah, produces man. for Big Bang, it's Twenty One. Crazy though, man. Who has a who has that much longevity in uh, producing yeah, music? Yeah, he's right? had crazy longevity, yeah. and and he's finally kind of, I guess the the full circle is that he's he's producing for a group who's big in the states, you know, globally yeah. everywhere, you know, and a place that he started from, you know, but um, you got or before he was even full on producer behind the scenes, he was with you guys. And was he like a big part of like the musical element of you guys producing? Of course, yeah. Man. He like produced all of our songs, you know. What yeah. I mean? But it was uh, since we what what happened with us a lot after the second album was um, you know we recorded on our own, just mm. like the way you doing right now. Oh, really? With this podcast, yeah, yeah. You know, no one was in the studio. We just rented a house somewhere, and I remember in the beginning we, we didn't you know like you know how you set up studios with the foam, the yeah. high, you know. The expensive ones, you yeah, know, yeah. Right? but no, we like eggshells, right? And yeah, just yeah. put like blankets up and stuff. And I always wondered if those, you know, putting those eggshell cartons were ever really effective. I'm like, I don't know you the know science what? behind this, but yeah, I see people I mean, doing yeah. it. <laughs> you know what that thing? So you know the uh, the expensive foam that you buy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking like maybe someone just looked at it and like, yo, they look like eggshell cartons, man. So let's just do <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, maybe yeah. it'll work the same. Yeah. I'm not sure if it works, right? Right. The blankets work the same, too, right? But um, yeah, so like we would punch each other like we would uh, uh record each other like right here you know we have headphones and on. these are yeah and these are the full on recordings that's going to be mass distributed yeah yeah, yeah. obviously you mix and master them, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but um that's how we recorded everything and so that's why it was us in the pits together just us four yeah. right and why you left us alone until it was like we took too long and then they go like all right you guys have to come out by this time you right know right I mean? right and i mean every artist need de needs yeah, deadlines yeah yeah yeah, without deadlines, we were. So well, how would it, I mean? So when when was the like, the moment you got a hit, and then it felt like oh shit, like we're out here performing and there's girls, you know that that K-pop sensation that we know familiar oh. now. Like, I think it was it, it was during the first album. You know what I mean? Because uh, the first album, our first song, hit pretty big. You know. What single are you talking about right now? One time at one time. One time. <laughs> like it was. Yeah. You're like, uh, you know what our uh, first yeah. single should be called? <laughs> Check this out. One time. <laughs> That's what I love, man. Every time that guy introduced us, like, yeah, Yobunchu, or whatever, right? He goes, one time and one time. <laughs> you know, yeah, goes, yeah, yeah. I thought it sounded hilarious. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good. The reason I like that song, man, is like, 
yo, that's our first song that we coming out with, right? Yeah. And if anyone listened to the lyrics and stuff, it's basically an introduction to us, who we were. You know, we're telling you exactly on the chorus, one time is one time for your mind. Right. You know, and like what it kind of means in Korean and this is who we are and this is what we want to do and stuff like that. And so the meaning of that song was our introduction to the world. Right. And that song actually hit, you know, it went to number one. It went to number one so fast, I remember like, uh, which was kind of odd, I remember when we were up for number one and the MCs were, you know, like, well, I mean, we're up there for number one against, yeah. I think the first time we were up for number one, it was against uh, JYP. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's Hanbin Nim, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, everybody know who he is. Yeah. And then I think, like, for the mass people, they're like, who are these dudes? So, like, literally, they asked us to introduce ourselves yeah. when our song is for number one, which is kind of funny. That's how fast the song hit, you know? So the song hit before everyone everyone even knew who we were. I, I was curious because, you know, now there's so many Korean acts performing in the States or Europe going around, you know, when they're touring. Yeah. Uh, because people are really familiar with the music overseas. But even that time, like, you know, I talked to, I didn't really grow up on too much Korean music, but I talked to like my peers and they all like grew up on, whether it's like H.O.T. and, you know, one time. I mean, I, I've heard songs and even growing up too, but um, I was wondering like, did you know about this kind of like Korean American community that might be listening to your music out there? Yeah, I was. Uh, Cause you, would you be visiting here or would you be out there pretty much most of the time? Most of the time I was out there, but okay. when I was out here, I mean, I just, you know, kicked it with the friends and family. Were your, and were your like, parents, like, parading you around hella proud and shit? Like, <laughs> well, not, I mean, yeah, I mean, they still have, like, I just sent everything to them. Wait, do they still got, like, mad one-time stuff in the crib? Yeah, but they got posters oh, and really? stuff, man. Oh, really? Yeah. One room, I'm, every time I go in there, I'm like, all right, this is kind of creepy now. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Like, I walked in here, and I was like, dang, it's a shrine to you. If you, you, know if you bring me a one-time poster, I will hang it up in here, I promise you. All right, man, it's coming. Okay. For show is coming. <laughs> you, you got, yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you some of the homies want some of that rare <laughs> rare swag, though. I had a homie who was like, yo, if you can get some of that Major Flavors <laughs> gear. And by the way, Danny said he has some Major yo, Flavors gear. Yo, I think gear. I do. I mean, since I used to just send everything to my parents, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh just got addicted to their house and uh because they have you know back in the day remember it was just videotapes right right so i think like i don't know if the video like they archived all the yeah so you know how like you no, you know how you go to a place and they you rent the videotape right 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 the yeah, Korean yeah. Videotape yeah, place, yeah. Right? and i don't know if they bought it or something but yeah. they just borrowed it and never returned it because right, 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 right. us you know well let me let me let me actually mention that thing too because so in the Korean community in the States, when every time new Korean dramas came out, there used to be these video stores. And th I don't know if they, everyone was disobeying pirating laws, <laughs> but literally they would just make copies of episodes of TV shows, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they would have like 20, 30 copies and Korean, like, oh, Korean parents would come and just rent a new episode yeah, yeah. every oh, time. Did that show come out yet? Yeah, you but I'm I mean? pretty sure they're not, they're disobeying I'll, pirating I'll laws just... in Korea. The innocence of us, I guess, I just assumed that they had deals like with clearances, yeah, right? clearances yeah. that, yeah. It's so, but I mean, if we think about it now, probably not. It was, I mean, would they just have it on those ghetto? It's just, all right. They bootlegged enough of our <laughs> shit too, so it was our turn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, so, but um, yeah, that's amazing. Um, and there was a lot of those video stories, man. That's the only way you could see those shows. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and then so so when you were out here, people would recognize you and stuff like that. I mean, I didn't really notice it because I wasn't really out there, man. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm pretty much a homebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, you I, are a K-pop dad now. <laughs> I'm a K-pop dad now. Yeah, but even back in the day, like even in Korea, you know, I didn't really. I was I was elderly even when I was young. Kinda yeah, elderly soul, I guess. And so um, when I'm out here, I remember one of the one of the times. Uh, so one of my best friends from high school, he went to uh, you know college in, um, in the Bay Area, and I went to go visit him. One of the times we came back after the first album, and um, I remember we were walking, and at that time I think. Me and Teddy, our, our Korean radar was very good. Mm -hmm. So if you saw a Korean person from like 100 yards away, we, we knew. We right? call that the KDAR. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> okay. So let's come up with good ones. Right? <laughs> KDAR, right? And so, you know, I saw a group of Asians come in and um, we were in like the city and I knew, oh, they're not Korean. Because you know how Asians can tell right. Asians 
differently, right? Sometimes. Some people These throw days me off it's harder. sometimes. These yeah, days yeah, it's yeah. harder. My Kdar's not that good. Or You know what I always wondered? How I could tell like if someone's Asians from the back of their head. <laughs> I'm like, how did I know that? <laughs> no, no, they're not just Asians. I'm talking about if they're Korean, right, Chinese, right, right. I, Japanese, I know, but that, like, that gets a little tough, too. Yeah, sometimes, these days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I knew that, okay, the group that's coming, is, they're not Korean. You yeah. Know? So, um, like, why would they know me? But uh, they did. They're a group of Chinese people, and they came and they just surrounded me. You know, yeah. I, was with, you know I was like, whoa, you know, and they're like, oh, you know, can we take a picture with you sign? And I was like, oh, cool, you know. I'm like, whoa, what was that? Was that was probably the early stages of, you know, globalizing K pop, really. Yeah, and so I remember my uh, friend telling me, like, oh, yeah, yeah, the, you know, the Chinese community here, they're really into, you know, Korean, right. like Korean music and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, really? That's what's up, you know? Yeah. And even then, I was like, I was really proud and uh, glad that the music was getting outside of just the Korean community and the Korean American community, right? But to see it now, of course, that's just now it's leaps and bounds compared to that, you know. Yeah, no, it, it's crazy because we, you know, we were co-hosting on Mnet America. Mnet already is a huge network in Korea, but they had this section called Mnet America, and I was saying I, I think the reason that the sub channel didn't really blow up is because a lot of K-pop fans don't want the English or American version of K-pop. We, we talked about this, you know, yeah. and I it's because they literally, they'll go straight to the source. You yeah, know what man. I mean? Even and if they don't understand yeah. it, they'll look it up and they subtitle want it the themselves. Full flavors. They don't want the watered down They version. don't want yeah. the, the, the English translation. They don't yeah. need anybody to translate it. You know what I'm saying? And I understand all the networks and people who are trying to be that bridge, mm -hmm. but they didn't need the fucking bridge. You know what I mean? Well, we realized that. Yeah. Uh, hoping could help out with some people right. that might make the transition a little easier. But then, you know, you live and you learn and Yeah, because even I mean, even if you look at groups right now, you know, Blackpink and BTS, majority of their lyrics are still in Korean. You know? Yeah. And, mean, it, and 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 then um, you know, and then when I talked to the fans, because recently I went to um the BTS concert at the Rose Bowl. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't go inside the concert, but I was uh, with a film production crew because um we're working on a little documentary on uh, K-pop fans, mm -hmm. specifically BTS, mm -hmm. and I'm interviewing all the all the kids to adults and families who are going to these concerts, and it was mad interesting because I'm asking all these questions about like the language barrier to like how'd you find out about them and like, you know, is it tough to? But they're, yeah, they're like it's tough, but doesn't you know it doesn't matter. Like they love them yeah, yeah. whether they understand it or not, and they have a connection whether you know the language stuff or not. Yeah, yeah. So that was so interesting. Like, and, and also a lot of the fans too, BTS like there there weren't necessarily all around k-pop fans too they were direct bts fans yeah. too so i'm seeing that kind of wave happening in k-pop too because before like a k-pop fan was like a little bit of everything uh -huh. now you have like the direct fans which makes well, it i think more... that's that's becoming even more uh because back in the day at our even yeah. when we were there our, our fans and stuff like that no dude you could only be a fan of one group you mm -hmm. know what i mean like there were sections in the audience and Literally, they'll be like statues, stone cold, no emotion or anything if they're not your fans. Yeah. Right. And there's like fan leaders and they'd be like, don't you move when another group is on, you know, only when our boys are on or, you know, our group is on. Do you scream? You know what right. I mean? So sometimes we would ask the managers like, yo, how many of our fans came in? Because, you know, we'd want it to be crickets. Oh, wait, yeah. you're, you're telling me the story. Yeah, because uh, you, you had you were on this show and you're performing with another group and you said that each section was like it was like gangs of new york but yeah man. where you had like, like and they're like colors like color they coordinated the whole, yeah these the whole like either balloons or something like that especially back in the day and each group had a color that still exists right uh kind of not as much i right. don't think but i remember <laughs> was your fan base pretty strong like it was they were i mean it was like hot strong like hot i remember their color i remember their color because yeah good gracious <laughs> They were white balloons, right? Right, yeah. A sea of white, man, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you notice it even in the dark. It's like, oh, look at all that white, right? Yeah. And then, and and then, then like, see, especially like outside night performance, and our group wouldn't be that big, right? But uh, you know what our color was, man? What? Our color was black, man. We were black <laughs> balloons. Like, I can't see nothing, man. Right, 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 right. right. So, but, wait, so this, and these are co the color of the balloons, like, pretty much for the rest of your career like that's yeah, i guess you know what yeah. i don't even know who decides that yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't know how we became uh black balloons and, and they were the white balloons and like god was like blue balloons or something yeah yeah or i don't know forgot who one, one of one of your like the, your fan uh, leaders like, was like you know what we probably should have gone with the white balloons <laughs> uh a lot of the shows were at night <laughs> these but it's also uh 
yeah, these guys are aren't that bright. So you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so so they, they were huge. Like HOT was a huge phenomenon yeah, at the time too. At least we had a color dome. I'm thinking like, what if you run out of colors? You know? I also wonder how they came with the acronym HOT because High Five of Teenagers is pretty amazing. <laughs> I gotta I say. don't. I don't think that's a mystery. I think they wanted HOT and they just filled, filled it, it in. Yeah, oh, filled okay. It in. Is that how a lot of the acronyms work in Korea? You think? I don't think they really wanted high five of teenagers. I think it's right. just, yo, H-O-T would be dope. High let's, five of teenagers. Let's fill that it is in. Amazing. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. fill it in. So um, I think that's how most of it goes. Right, right. Well, I, that's my theory on that. Because they recently had a, a reunion as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. The, a, the name ago. probably didn't age well, teenagers. Man. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, man, you call me H-O-T, like N-K-O-T-B, man. Yeah. New kids on the block. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's you true. looked at me like you didn't know, man. <laughs> well, that's a little bit before my time, new kids on the block. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, well, I mean, what would you say your group was comparable to if you guys were, you know, as far as influence and what you guys were doing at the time? Like, would you say it was like a new kids on the block? No, nah, no. Nah. I mean, we weren't, uh, like... We weren't like boy bandaged to that. Oh, it know, wasn't. Like, it was more yeah. hip hop. It was a little bit more grimy, you know, like a B two K. We weren't even that clean. <laughs> um, oh, it was, it was, but it was really more hip hop then. It was straight. I, I think it, it it started the path. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think obviously the people who came afterwards, and I mean, uh, Drunken Tiger, they came out the same time we did. Like we debuted at the same time. You know. So we were out there on all those performances as rookie artists, mm -hmm. um, and we're both kind of representing hip hop, you know. And if anything, yo, you know, I give it up for Drunken Tiger because you know they were um, really doing their thing too back yeah. then, and so bringing in that real yeah, hip hop like, like. I think we had thing, you know, that mutual respect in the sense of yeah. you know we do. We liked hip hop. We're from the states, right? And we're trying to you know make it bigger for people in Korea, right. you know what I mean? And why we like it and stuff like that, and hopefully they accept it, you know? And so um, I think definitely at that time, um, we had something to do with that path being paved, you know? And, I mean? and, you know, just even after kind of like, I always think about musicians and that kind of like transitioning out of the performance space, right? Like mm -hmm. life after K-pop, life mm -hmm. after rap, yeah, yeah, you know? And like for you, you were still, and, and not just you, but other members, maybe few members, you or Teddy or whatever, yeah. was still doing stuff behind the scenes with YG Entertainment, right? Like working with the new groups, up and coming groups. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, I think. Uh, what kind of role did you transition into? It was kind of like cultivating a new artist, you know what I mean? Just yeah. like, uh, just being with them every day. Because one day I was at the office and I remember I was just thinking like, yo, um, I was just thinking about the trainees and what they do. And, you know, they have a, pretty tight schedule, you know, and uh, they have singing coaches, dancing coaches, language coaches. Language you know. coaches, is it like English usually? It's English, uh, Japanese, um, yeah. like uh, these days I'm like Chinese, I'm sure, you know, because oh, it's okay. worldwide, you know. So really so like just, multiple languages, yeah, yeah. wow. And so it's basically like they're schooling too, you know, in that way, um, because they're gonna be put out into the world. Is there a so swag coach? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I think I think that one is just like just being around the atmosphere, right? You know? So back in the day, if anything, there was no swag coach, right? But when we think about it, we someone think was telling me like Bieber had a swag coach, like when he was younger. Yeah, or something. yeah, I remember seeing that. Someone was, was saying that, like, or I, it was like an article or yeah, something. Yeah, it was like yeah, a yeah. news article yeah. or something like that. Um, but I think when I think about it back in the day, what it was is like, uh, especially like uh, GD and like Taeyang, you know what I mean? Um, we weren't their coach by any means, but the office was just much smaller and everyone was just right there. And so everyone was just around, you know what I mean? Whether they were trainees or yeah. whether artists or whatever. And um, so I think them just being around the atmosphere and just being around, and this is what I got from them because that's what they said to us, you know? It's not like we were trying to do it or nothing like that, but just us just messing around and just watching how we just be. You know, right, right, right. Just being around that atmosphere, kind of, they learned a lot too. You know mm. what I mean? So I think it's just naturally that way. I mean, they never uh, came to the states at that time or nothing like that. But you know, they were interested and they want to know more about. Yeah, you, I mean, I've, you, you know just, I mean? I mean, I think all the successful groups have, uh, or successful artists, um, have that curiosity. Yeah, I mean, to, you just, for, you, for art and music and fashion. Yeah, see what everyone else is doing and see, you know, what you get inspired by because you need inspiration, you know what I mean? So, right, right, um, right. 
not just from one source, mm-hmm. you know, because you don't know what's going to inspire you really. And yeah. So, and then um, so you so you saw the kind of the growth of like Twenty One and Big Bang yeah, as yeah. as the phenomenon started taking off. Yeah, man, <laughs> it's crazy though. I remember uh, I was having a. I think like afterwards when they they became huge and I think I went out with like lunch with them or something like that and it was just mayhem right mm. and I was just thinking like wow man I I can't just go out and have lunch with you guys no more you yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. can't just go out to a restaurant and just grab a bite to eat right you know right what I mean? right like that's crazy <laughs> right? yeah yeah um and so yeah I mean to the level that they experienced I mean I don't think we ever experienced that right and so um, I was actually at Coachella when Blackpink was performing Uh, and it was like really I think uh, that was like the the latest kind of eye-opening thing for me of like where K-pop is at because it was literally not even that many Asians that were like I was in this like VIP area that was really already packed too and there was a lot of industry heads or whatever VIP (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, it was the homies path. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. But it was like the whole section was like a lot of industry people, yeah. and it and it was mainly like non Asian. You know, even the even the the Rose Bowl. I BTS mean, that's, that's what we saw even when we you know went yeah. to those K cons and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that, you know that's true. I mean, the first time, and I yeah, because like, we actually interviewed BTS. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. we interviewed. Uh, this was like five. Six years yeah, ago, they maybe? came on that stage and stuff. They yeah, came yeah. up freestyling with yeah, like yeah, Ratmon yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it was interesting because at the time, like, I was hearing so much stuff about that particular group. Because, yeah, yeah. remember, we were like, I, I didn't know much about them, but uh-huh. the fans was like, they're very unique because yeah, they're yeah. bringing a lot more like hip hop back into the, uh-huh, the K pop uh-huh. space, uh-huh. and nobody was like bringing yeah. that energy in. Yeah, yeah. So it was interesting to hear that. And that was like right when the first thing came out or something. Yeah, that was like not too long after they came out. And then, um, yeah, I mean, much respect to them, dude. Yeah, I probably can't get them on the podcast now, right? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, I don't see them on your list. but uh, Yeah, yeah, I have a little whiteboard (laughs) over there. Um, Yeah, Yeah, my name wasn't on there. I wrote it on there. It's on the back. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. No, but it's so crazy to see that growth and then see the talk shows and the the way people react because – it's a weird culture, this K-pop, because there's still a whole world that doesn't get it still. A section of the world that doesn't get it. Well, yeah. Like, I think it may be a more generational thing. I mean, you know? if you... Because it's different from Beatles mania in a sense. It is a whole another language. I think, you know, certain things take time. Like, look how long it took for, you know, uh, like Korean food to get popping. Right. You know what I mean? I think one thing is that I always thought was Korean food, Korean food right when you look at it, it's not that appealing. You know what I mean? I think Korean food is a um, more aesthetically, it, it, but it is more accessible. I think flavor palette wise than a lot yeah. of other foods. But though. people are reluctant to try it because it's not visually pleasing. Visually pleasing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it's not like really that you could put it in like a food court style as right. much. And so I, think, I mean, it's a lot of dishes. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, you don't want, if you live in a Korean right? household, you got to wash like a fucking yeah. gang of dishes. I mean, some of them, a lot of them are little small dishes. but that, That's there's, annoying as shit, <laughs> there's dude. There's like 20 of them, man. You got to marinate 20 different things to eat a fucking meal, oh, bro. Yeah. Goddamn. It's pretty healthy, though, too, though, man. Is it, though? Yeah, I mean, I always argue veg- about this. Yeah. I know it's, it's health. It's mm. like there's a lot of vegetables, but isn't it a lot of sodium, too? I always argue about this with friends. I'm not. I love Korean food. Are you kidding me? All right. Don't look at me like I'm a. I'm a. I have no, I'm a disgrace I'm to my sure culture. Sure, they have sodium in it, right? <laughs> like, no, it's just a lot of marinated things, though. But I mean, for me, it's just um, they pref- they made vegetables taste amazing. Right. You know what I mean? That's they, the one thing I would say yeah. that I'm grateful for is like I never when I was growing up, it's I never hated vegetables because it was always in our yeah, diet. Man, I was like. It's because, you know, Korea is such a poor country, you know, they had to perfect vegetables, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, man, they perfected that, you know. And like, now we have you know. fucking a gang of meat, and that's what we're popular for. <laughs> like, Which is funny, right? Yeah, because we're not that right. popular for vegetables. Everyone, like you mentioned. My theory back in the day is like, yo, Korean barbecue is the bomb back in the day when, yeah. you know, still like only Koreans ate it, you know what I mean? I'm like, I think it's not working because, yo, you go to a restaurant, you don't cook your own food, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But. Growing up in L- like LA, Koreans always had like one stereotype going. It was like early on, it was like owning convenience stores, right? And then it went into like, um, I think it went into like Gangnam style, <laughs> and, you know. And then like Korean barbecue, yeah, and then yeah. karaoke, and then yeah. K-pop. Like those yeah, are the yeah, things yeah. that you mentioned. And well, Kim Jong Il's always been around too. Like, <laughs> yeah, Kim Jong Un and Kim Jong Il. 
you know, because mm, not as much. Yeah. yeah, I always find it weird, like when I turn on the TV and you know, or the news, and you always see like Kim Jong Il, Kim Jong Un, and he's a Korean dude. You know, North Korean. You South don't see Korean. Kim Jong Il anymore, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. It's just like because in in general, like he's from North Korea, but he's Korean. It's the only thing that separates yeah. our people is a fucking border in the middle. Yeah, and like uh, you know how when they show those clips of that uh, that famous uh, news anchor Ajima, and she's speaking. The, the, the propaganda yeah, news anchors, like, right? Wow, I understand what she's saying, man. You know? Yeah, I gotta say the 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 you know, North Korean news anchors are definitely delivering the news with more passion than South <laughs> Korea. I gotta say, I gotta you say. know what happens if they don't? You yeah, know yeah, yeah. So, I, but I still gotta say, come on, South Korea, we we gotta step up our passion in the I, news I, delivery. I don't think they got choice, man. <laughs> but you know, you know, it's a democracy. You're supposed to not have be too biased on that so yeah i mean so i mean what are your you know thoughts on i guess uh that journey you know we're here now and we're you know it's even exceeded i think far more expectations um yeah man i'm proud man yeah because i was even proud when um i told you back in the day in 98 or something like that in the bay area when just another country was you know liking the music that you know we were bringing out in korea and so, you know, it's my heritage and my parents' heritage. You know, we're, we're Americans, but we're Korean Americans, you know? And so um, it was just a lot of pride, you know? And so even right now, man, it's just very, it's dope. I there's, love it. There's probably a lot of K-pop groups, like, that grew up on your shit too, right? I'm hoping. I, I mean, mean, no, we like, did, we, every time to, we used to do K-Con, like, they, they were like, oh, I used to listen yeah, to you and shit, yeah, you know? The older people, the elderly people, yeah. Yeah, that's true sure. you're pretty pretty og now at yeah. more because the group that are coming groups that are coming out are like pretty young right and they so a lot of them might not have even grown up on your stuff no no they shouldn't have i mean if you look back on it um they could mm-hmm. know who we were but that's if you like research it you know what i mean like yeah you brought up the beatles earlier like i love the beatles man yeah. like I spent all day listening to the Beatles and just watching Beatles documentaries and yeah. stuff and what they did to change the world. You know what I mean? It's just mind boggling, right? That um, obviously they're not my era, you know, mm-hmm. but. Um, Beatles you know, is a little before your era, too. Little, Come on. Just a little bit before, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's just. Um, I have a little curious mind. I have to know, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And um, it's just, you know, so you have to look back on it and stuff. So, stuff. So most times when but a lot of times you know people connect to the music that they grew up with and that impacted them at the time with a bunch of people in the era you know i mean so um of course i joke around about it but yeah i mean if you knew us and you were fans of us during that time when you were like uh teenagers or in high school or college or even younger junior high then of course you're older you know what i mean like that in itself our last album came out 14 years ago man think about that. that's wild yeah that's crazy when i think about that i i'm like what you know what i mean like last year was our 20th anniversary you know right. what i mean since our first album came out and stuff and i'm like dang dude like this year our album's old enough to drink you know what i mean like that's just <laughs> nuts man yeah no yeah no i i i would you say like i i have a lot of homies too besides even you like some other cats that were in k-pop groups like lesser known k-pop groups that are older now too uh-huh. we went to korea and like they still got like we were at some event and like a fan brought like a gift and this was like uh-huh. you know they hadn't put out any music in like 15 20 years yeah, or something yeah, yeah. and they get like a box of chocolates each one has their picture on and i'm like damn like these are some og fan bases yeah, that man, still stuck with, around like, i mean even to this day there's some fans that you know um i still stay connected with you know what i mean yeah. from the get-go and you know i remember i got a like a cacao text not too long ago um, from one of the OG fans from like first, second album. And um, she, you know, she's just telling me that, oh, you know, she, she, you know, now she's married and has, she's having a kid and stuff. And I'm yeah. just saying like, yo, congrats, man. That's what's up. That's crazy. Know? Yeah. So. I always noticed that every, every group or every, artists not just k-pop and just music there's always like that one or two that are hardcore fans yeah, and yeah, you always yeah. see them and even more now because you're, you're in social media like you just see them pop up all the time commenting on new things you drop you're like this this person is a yeah, real yeah, hardcore yeah. Oh, yeah, fan right that. there i mean me it's easier to see because there's not as many <laughs> you know what i'm saying like straight up um yeah uh, obviously social media i'm pretty not good at it so, well so now like you know you're married you have you have two beautiful kids um and they're growing up now to like how old are they 
Yeah, so my boy, first boy, he turns seven in like a month and a half. And the yeah. girl, uh, my girl is five. That's wild, bro. That's crazy. Life after K pop. Yeah, man. Life K pops. It's, it's beautiful. You're K pops. <laughs> Anybody want to hit me up or see me? I'm, I'm at Disneyland every week, so. <laughs> He's doing a meet and greet at the Disneyland yeah. meet by the Harry Potter section. No one is ever said hi to me at Disneyland oh wait man. <laughs> Harry Potter is not Disneyland right That's, yeah man you totally wrong I fucked that up come on I fucked that That's, up that's uh, universal oh okay okay we've been there w was your girl uh, you know your wife not your girl <laughs> talk about like we were just high school or something nah I thought you were talking about my baby daughter <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no was, <laughs> was your wife uh, like a fan of you during that time or um, I'm hoping <laughs> she uh, you know the funny thing was and I didn't really mind it too much um is uh, all my people, they didn't really listen to K-pop. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, they knew when our album dropped, but they never like watched the shows and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And back in those days, if you didn't go out and rent them videos, you didn't see it. There's no YouTube and you yeah, know, yeah. social media the way it is right now. And so, you know, they just hear from their parents or they saw it in a newspaper article, like, yeah. oh, one time or this new group or something like that was in an article and isn't Danny in that group or something like that, you know? Yeah. And then when I come back, we just meet up and it's just the same as before, you know? But, um, you know, a lot of our friends, man. Yo, I love you. Um, never heard your podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes it goes that way, man. Well, I didn't mind this, it too this much. This dude came on the <laughs> podcast, like, he's like, oh, it's video too? I'm like... <laughs> I'm almost 40 episodes in. Every one of them has had video and I audio. I posted on every one of my social media outlets. Uh, Yet like you did not my know. Face or something. I was like, yo. But we had a, we had a good run together where we hosted this yeah, interesting man. TV show where we interviewed so many K-pop groups that have come and gone too. Really. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, it was a trip because. Uh, Never, you know, did I expect that you would stay on with it for so long, and it just uh, well, it's all I have, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I have. No, man, but that was dope, man. Like, so uh, I mean, I, I like, you know, I like, I like having conversations, and yeah. you know, I think, I think what I want to do with this show too is actually bring in kind of what we were trying to do also at Mnet America, except with more kind of freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and like having more conversations where it's raw and uncut and unedited, you know, because I mean, we had to do a lot of shit for that show. We had to do skits and all types of shit. This is pretty much just straight. I up. didn't mind that shit. No, I didn't mind I it either. I was too straightforward. And one time I was about to like get out of my show. I mean, I, w yeah. I wore that bird costume, that first show that you ever came yeah. in. No, I did some wild some shit that I didn't think I was right ever going to do. And I had a pretty big drinking problem at the time, too. So I was coming in pretty hungover a lot. I know. I went over there and woke you up and picked you up to go and shit. Yeah, no, it was an interesting show. I mean, I learned a lot about K-pop during that time. I didn't know anything about K-pop until I went on that show. And next thing you know, I'm interviewing BTS Vix. Um, uh, <laughs> how do I not remember anymore? Uh, Yo. <laughs> FT Island. And you said BTS and VIX, man. That's the. That's the two different. Yeah, yeah, yeah two yeah, different. That's things. crazy. No, but yeah. girl groups, guy groups, and solo yeah, acts. Yeah. Um, it was it was really kind of an eye opener thing, and I felt like wow, like this is starting to become more and more of a thing. And we were getting invited to concerts backstage and yeah. talking to them and seeing the fans all of a sudden change into bigger arenas. You know. I remember that one interview that you did with, uh, with CM Blue. You had to go on your own because I was in Hong Kong oh, yeah. or something like that. I'm like, yeah. yo, when they said that he's going to go interview him, I'm like, yo, how you going to do that? Yeah. And I was a little buzzed, too. So I had the Asian <laughs> glow. Like, if you see the picture with me and CM Blue, I was seeing red. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was getting red over there. But, um, uh, man. Yeah, how did Blackpink, though, do, do, though? I didn't go see Michael I thought they were dope. I thought they were dope. And, I mean, it was – the dope thing is also, like, there weren't really many – kind of girl groups oh, you know what i mean at, at stuff like coachella yeah, yeah, yeah. there isn't like a destiny's child like type thing like okay, especially okay. like these days yeah, there isn't yeah, a lot yeah, in yeah, general yeah. so seeing like like these four girls that were all equally proportioned in to sync. moving in <laughs> sync it's yeah. like kind of mesmerizing in yeah, a way yeah, it's and, a beautiful and, thing too yeah, yeah and you know they have like a band of people who are some of the best musicians yeah. in the industry you know, not Korean or whatever too backup their, dancers their music is good man. and they played the big stage you know like this is like the, one yeah, of the yeah, biggest stages you know so and um, it was it was kind of a beautiful thing it was kind of, it felt like almost like a that weekend was insane yeah. because it was like B, a BTS was on like SNL yeah. and then like Blackpink at Coachella yeah. and then you know a couple weeks later BTS selling out two three shows at the Rose Bowl yeah. 
So I I feel like this past couple of months have been kind of insane and for K-pop. Blackpink went to Inglewood, the forum. Yeah, yeah, it's selling that out. Like last couple of months have been insane. And you know, I'm watching Stephen Colbert. He just did a great piece of uh, BTS. They, BTS w was a guest, live performance guest, mm -hmm. and they did a black and white like an old 1950s, uh, like 60s, 70s show where he's like a, like a old host introducing Beatles, mm -hmm. and they made it all like filmy. Oh. But it, yeah, the crowd is like oh, like old school oh, Beatles okay. fans, but but for BTS, yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. he really kind of reenacted the Beatles mania. Yeah, and it was it was actually fucking genius. It was great. I'll go look it up. Yeah, yeah, movie. but it was, it was yeah. Because I really wanted to go check uh, Black Pink out. You know what I mean? So uh, you know, Teddy did hook up ticket. I was like, yo, give me some tickets, man. I yeah. want to go check them out this time. You know because. Uh, especially like Lisa and Jenny, you know, um, I was there from the get go. Yeah, you know, I remember seeing her audition vi tape. You know, yeah, because uh, uh, you saying even well, Jenny's been part of like YG forever since she was like super young, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, I think she was like fourteen or something. Yeah, because she was even in like G uh, the um, GD and TOP's. Yeah, she was video. at YG training for years before she was in that, that xx video right yeah yeah she yeah. was there years before that you know what i mean i think they did that after i left yeah and then like lisa you know i was there when you know we went to thailand to uh sas scouter like to that's to we just held an open audition and she was one of them you know and, and she we, stood and out or what her. yeah she did she stood out for sure so so there was all like when you went to thailand all types of people came even koreans living in thailand yeah and, it was just open audition for the people in thailand like, and she came in them, and uh one thing I remember was like, cause uh, that was memorable. Was be I remember she was just you know doing her thing on stage, and I thought, yo, yo, she moves pretty good. You know what I mean? Good dancer. Yeah, and she's like, you know, she had this, um, she had this quality. You know, she was very confident too. Mm -hmm. You know, and she was so young, and I remember she jumped off of the stage and like came right in my face, and I was like, yo, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, like that performance had, element. Like yeah. she has the courage to do that. I'm like. Yeah. She is confident, you know what I mean? So there was a thing about her. And then so, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we talked to her afterwards again. And, you know, she was totally different person off stage, right. you know what I mean? And she was very humble and stuff. And, um, yeah, and so we were pushing it for YG. You know, you should check this girl out. You know, you should check her out. And then he finally said, okay, you know, bring and her over. And then we went to, I remember me and this young, we had to go to Thailand and, you know, basically talk to her parents and, you know. Get the uh, approval. Yeah, get the approval, man. So, and just How did they see, feel? Um, well, I think, you know, of course, they looked up YG and see, you know, what kind of groups are there and stuff like that. And yeah. um, maybe, you know, they'll be okay. You know, she'll be okay. And, right. You know, um, so, you know, they were, and they know that her daughter, I mean, the, their daughter had a passion in wanting to do this, right. you know, and it was really legit and real. That's, and, a, that's, a, that's a crazy move, though, right? Like a, um, your daughter or son going to a different country yeah, yeah. It's, it's scary because you're like oh you know you want to make sure they're in good hands yeah of course so yeah, and, yeah. and it, that training process is was a while before they debuted it like how many years would you say I think it was like five years five six years, six years wow. maybe. of yeah, preparation before, yeah to, before they debut because wow. i mean lisa didn't speak korean at all before when she wow was there, you know? and now so she's like completely fluent she's probably you know she's definitely better than you yeah <laughs> So. That's not saying much, but I gotta <laughs> say, but uh, but it, I mean, it is interesting because now, like, damn, that's such a long like journey of preparation to the point now she's like the most I think followed Instagram Korean artist, a uh, K-pop artist. She is. She's the most followed. Maybe I should follow her. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea, but uh, she could have yeah, gotten there quicker if you followed. <laughs> not kidding. But uh, yeah, that's um. So when I see where it's gone, especially firsthand like that, I yeah, mean, yeah. it's like it's it's nuts, and even like when um when <laughs> even my even my because i guess like the the black pink fans are called black jacks wait wait no no um um no, that was 21 uh, man. That was blink 21. yeah blink 21. yeah my bad yeah <laughs> people are gonna kill me for that one <laughs> no they're called blink yeah and my homie who's like like a rap like he's like a lyricist yeah, yeah. rapping rapping motherfucker and i'm like oh yeah yeah, yeah. like um w I, I had an extra ticket to coach i was like yeah you can if you want to come you can roll with me or whatever I, I was like yeah i think like black pink performing or whatever and he's like yeah, yeah i'm a blink 
<laughs> <laughs> this fool was like, yo, he's like, a, he's like a. I had no idea. Like this fool be rapping. Like he's like super hip hop type dude. Yeah. You know. He's like, what? Black Pink? I'm a blink. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh, shit. That's what's up, yeah, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, so. You're proud of it, too, man. Ain't nothing, that's dope, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The most like, unexpected people are, like, really into it, you know? I, I think early on when you weren't into K-pop, like, you didn't understand it. But now it's like you could have a hardcore rap dude be into it. You have, like, yeah, I mean, people see, in hipster th- worlds. That's a, like, that, that was the thing. Like, you know, uh, we always used to say, like, yo, even in our songs, we always used to say that, you know? Like, and... Um, Yo, you don't like, cause we hated the people who just, you know, like, yo, if you're gonna come and see a show, you know, you know what I mean? Like, don't just stand there, just have fun. Even if it ain't your group, you know what I mean? We used to put those in the lyrics and stuff like that. And I remember uh, one of the songs in the third album, we told them, we told, you know, we we're telling everybody, you know what? Put down your balloons and just put your hands up. This was, you know, I, I like how that was before put down your phones. No, no, put down your because ba- it was that, the balloons, right? No, but that's what I'm saying. Before yeah. this, now it's like smartphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like right, back I'm then, sure you were like, like, put down your balloons. <laughs> yeah, just put down your balloons and just put your hands right, up. Right, right, right. You just wanted them to, to enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah. And so I remember after that, we kind of regretted it, right? <laughs> because then our fans stopped holding balloons and we're like, look like we have no fans. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, man, maybe we shouldn't have said that. Right, but, right, right. right. Uh, but yeah, just to see. I mean, I remember Icon. I was in Hong Kong when they won. At, uh, Are you the trying best. to rhyme right now? No. <laughs> I was in Hong Kong with Icon and they won. <laughs> it just comes out naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when they won the best new artist, and I remember when I saw that, I was like, "Yo!" Because you know all the memories of them when they first came in. Did you have like a moment because you you know yeah, you, man, like, you're like seeing a, these you're like, like a tear down my arm like good job boys yeah. way to go you know so it, it was dope man and just to think about how like YG f- must have felt then, you know, like, especially like when we actually, you know, won Best New Artist or something like that, you know, and that was the first time I had a feeling like that, like, yo, that was what's up, you know, like, and they earned it, you know, I know they earned it because, you know, I know what they went through, you yeah. know, and so. Uh, I think people don't realize how competitive singing, you know, and yeah, like man, pop, cut, mu- pop music, especially in Asia. It's cutthroat, man. It's cutthroat anywhere yeah. in the world, you know, it's States or whatever, For but sure. if you if you go to Asia, it's crazy because there's kids who go to these karaoke rooms that's for like one person yeah and they practice like they literally practice well, every I day mean, in like Kore- in korea if you see a lot of the the karaoke spots they're called nore yonsupjang which is a uh, singing practice yeah, singing practice room yeah yeah, place, yeah yeah you know and it's not like karaoke in america where it's like an activity you're just people will go in there alone in these small booths right yeah. and they're just it's a place where they can practice and vent so singing culture yeah. is really big in asia well, i think also if you got if you think about it you know a lot of times people are taking public transportation so you know a lot of times these days i just you know i'm singing the most in my car when I, you know i'm just rolling in traffic or yeah. something by myself blasting the music right but in korea if, if you don't have that then that's where you set let go and set free you know what i mean yeah because you can't really wild out like that on the subway you know what right I mean? right right or you know even it's in a, korea, it is a stress relief for korea's things. apartments you know yeah your next neighbor's gonna hear you if you fart you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So like you can't do that in, in k-town in los angeles there's all these karaoke rooms it's more like a party environment but yeah, one yeah, day yeah. I, I went to karaoke passing by one of the rooms and there's this like fob dude with glasses with his legs crossed and like a big big ass room alone he's like i'm a creep <laughs> i was like i, I like knocked on the window like are you good <laughs> like, but yeah it was uh it was it was just it, it's it's a thing it's like a way to relieve stress and shit yeah. yeah i mean it's uh and plus there's a lot of talented people in korea man for how small the country oh, the, is if you watch the singing shows yeah, on there jeez like, yeah, it's it's wild. Sometimes I think good thing it wasn't that open before, or else, you know, maybe I wouldn't have got my spot. You know what I mean? No, real talk. Got but I, but uh, yo, Danny, I always appreciate you checking in with me. We haven't yeah. seen each other in like probably like a year. Yeah, I'll see you next year, though. <laughs> I'll see you next year. We'll go hold hands and go vote together. You know? Yeah. Every so. time a like a different show gets canceled, like, <laughs> I, and there's a new show. Yeah, I, so gotta... I was thinking. I told my wife last night when you texted me. I was like, damn. I wonder who canceled on his ass. No, 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 no. Nah, 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 nah. nah, I wanted to. Ca- I, you know, the funny thing is, I I thought of this idea of getting you on the show because I mean, I I've been thinking about it for a while, but I was reminded because so I was watching a Vice doc on an all white K-pop group. Oh, word. Yeah, I don't know how that brought your memory. <laughs> up. No, but there's oh, an word. all white K-pop group in Korea, and they're trying to. It's like their first like the yeah. the headline of the video is like most controversial k-pop group so most i guess they're the nwa of k-pop except all white <laughs> and i don't know but it was uh interesting and people were like 
debating you know if this is like just it, to me i thought it's not even about them being all white it was more cringeworthy because i felt like they weren't as authentic to the well, culture it comes like this is it just because they're white that they're trying to do the group, you know what I mean? I don't think right. Then in, in, like in, a, in a in a utopian world, it shouldn't matter, you know. And of course not, right? But right. then it comes to if it's just if that's the gimmick, you know. Well, what it's I mean? just the authenticity, like the you know, the pronunciation, everything, or their familiarity with K-pop wasn't even all there. I felt like so. I think that's kind of what comes with more. That's what's more cringe. Than, I mean, if they had a love for it in a sense, then that's all that mattered, I guess, because. I mean, my Korean wasn't on point, and like my K-pop IQ wasn't that great. But I love the country and the music right. that was coming out. You know what I mean? So yeah. How do you feel about? So I'm curious about this. So there's a lot of rappers from the states who go out there and learn the language. Do you think that there's still an authenticity there if you're trying to do stuff out there? You know? No, I mean it depends on you know what your purpose what what your goal is what your purpose is right. and if you you know true love for not just the music that you're gonna you know the country or the place that you're gonna make music at or for from the get-go you yeah. know what i mean like and you respect it and there's a lot of and, learning you have to yeah do for you have sure to love for it i mean because the people have to accept you you know what i mean because if you think it's i mean there's an acceptance thing that I understand, you know what I mean? Because you're trying to gain the love of the people there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, in a sense, I am Korean, so it makes the road a little bit easier, but I was a Korean American, so right. I wasn't even Korean by document wise, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So um, in that day and age, it's almost like I was a foreigner. And plus my Korean wasn't all on point and stuff like yeah. that. So even I had to earn my acceptance in that way. Like, why are you coming all the way over here, you know? Yeah. Like, I never lived there or nothing like that. Yeah, your parents might have, you know what I mean? So it maybe made it a little bit easier, but you always have to gain the acceptance of the place that you're going to. Right. Even if you're going just for a, a show, a concert or something like that, man, you got to respect the culture. You know uh, what I mean? Also, so, do you, uh, when's the last time you saw, sang your song at a Korean karaoke? Sadly, not as long as... <laughs> has, has, it, uh, has it been pretty recent or what? Uh, definitely this year, man. Like, Did, <laughs> So is it like you go to a karaoke and then someone's like, Daddy, come on, do this one time for I, us. I, so my first thing is always, no, nah, no, nah, I do not sing our songs. Right, 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 no. right. I think you know I mean? made you do that one time, yeah, too. I do not sing our songs. And then a little later, I'm like, do you still want to hear it? And, <laughs> you know then you're, and then you're the one putting in the code yeah. for your song. <laughs> yeah. It's like, who, um, hey, who picked this? Well, no, I, I did it. No, you guys didn't. Didn't you want it? No, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, and then you'll go in. You'll go in on the song. Yeah, but people probably in. enjoy it. Like, if, like, you know, you're with friends and they're, like, fans of that song, too. Because I know my boys, like, in my group chat yeah, yeah. that are, like, you know, Korean cats my age or older. Uh -huh. They're like, if we were at karaoke, they'll spaz the fuck out. They're putting that shit on their IG story and tagging. I won't do it in the beginning. I'll take a couple of drinks. A couple of I mean? drinks yeah. and then you'll go in. Yeah, and then have a tear like, I used to you be. Think, yeah, you take a couple of drinks and then you'll throw the tambourine to the home. Like, you get, you're on tambourine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And right after, put the second album song on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, yo, Danny, good catching up with you. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, I'm happy you sit It was much more serious than I expected, man. Nah, it's cool. I wanted to kind of, you know, break go into it, but I want to get you um, on as a co-host next time I have more. I want to get more Korean guests, too. Oh, yes, definitely. So I want to get you as a guest co-host anytime you want to sit in. You're welcome to, so. Sadly, I have more time than you think. Last minute, I came in right now, man. You know I don't want to interrupt your Disneyland <laughs> trips, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. Yo, by the way, I'm going now. to Disneyland right after this. Are sure. you really? Straight for up. Real? No, oh, no okay. lie. Straight <laughs> up, 100%. Yo, uh, tune in next week for another episode of Fun with Dumb. Uh, comment below with uh, any guest suggestions. So Soon uh, it will be Fun with Dumb and Danny. Hey, peace. Don't take my show. All right, peace. <laughs>